Uh, hello, I'm, I'm John Voigt. I'm chairman of the local Pennsylvania anthracite section for the Society of Mining, Metallurgy, and Exploration. Our local, our local members and residents are excited to welcome guests from SME headquarters, now located in Colorado, and its parent organization, the American Institute of Mining, Metallurgical, and Petroleum Engineers. Today, AIME is made up of four member societies, Association of Iron and Steel Technology, Society for Mining, Metallurgical, Metallurgy and Exploration, Society of Petroleum Engineers, and the Minerals, Materials and Metal Society. These four organizations total approximately 200,000 engineers and other professionals engaged in the extraction and materials community, which originally founded AIME here in Wilkes-Barre in 1871 on this day. AIME is the second oldest engineering society established in the United States and we are here to celebrate the founding of AIME in the club room of the former Wyoming Valley Hotel on River Street in Wilkes-Barre 150 years ago today. To kick things off, we're pleased to introduce the Honorable Mayor of the City of Wilkes-Barre, George C. Brown, to say a few words. The mayor retired from a career of 38 years in senior management positions with national and international companies and Mayor Brown earned a BS degree in human resources management from King's College and a Master of Science in organizational management from Misericordia. He was sworn in as mayor of Wilkes-Barre January 6, 2020, and Wilkes-Barre was incorporated as a city 150 years ago, the same year as the inception of AIME. Mayor Brown? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for being here today and those of you that are not from the Wilkes-Barre area, come back. It's a beautiful city. I hope you come back and enjoy what's happening in the future. Today, we're ending our fine arts fiesta. As you can see, it was three days and we decided, look, let's open up the city. Let's take our mask off if we can, and let's show the beauty of the city. I'll share a couple of things with you, if you don't mind, before I get into more about AIME. Uh, first of all, Friday, we had a groundbreaking. We broke ground for a brand new hotel, 102, uh, built, uh, 102 apartments in there. It's going to be uh, five stories. It's going to be luxury. It's going to be wonderful. And, and I actually was able to do the groundbreaking. Now, when I got there, I figured, you know, we're going to do a, a shovel. Oh. They rented an excavator and they said, Mayor, get in there and start digging a hole. And I, said, <laughs> I said, I can't do that. And the gentleman's building the hotel said, no, he said, I rent that just for you. <laughs> so anyway, I had a hard time. I'm, I'm not a technical person. I'm not an engineer. We did it. It took about 15 tries, but I finally, you know how it goes boom, boom, boom on a cartoon? That's what happened on Friday. <laughs> so we had that. And then we came over here and we opened up, officially opened up the Fine Arts Fiesta, 65th year. Wilkes-Barre is open for business. We're here. We're going to move on to be better than ever. I welcome you and I hope that you come back. If you're a visitor, please spend some time here. Frequent the different uh, fine arts fiesta shops. Now, as was said just recently, uh, we dug up some information and I want to share it with you regarding City of Wilkesbury. And it just so happens that yes, Friday, May 5th, 1871, I'm going to read to you what was from the Republican which was a newspaper at that time. City of Wilkes-Barre Correspondence. A city at last. The bill incorporating Wilkes-Barre, a city passed the legislature finally this morning and was approved this afternoon by the governor. It takes some additional territory, makes 15 wards, 15 councilmen. Tony, how about that? 15, we have five right now. 15 councilmen to be elected, an additional six to be appointed. Tony has 21 councilmen. Anyway, and the mayor. The school districts are preserved as they were in the borough. It will have one feature that our borough government lacked, that it will be much more expensive government, which taxpayers certainly will not feel the joy of. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is the city of Wilkes-Barre officially is 150 years old. So it's a, it's a second dedication here. Uh, I'm pleased today to be here presenting a special mayoral proclamation. 
And uh, George, go ahead, George. George, how are you? So if, if you bear with me, I'm going to read the proclamation. Office of the Mayor, a proclamation. Whereas on, mayor's, on May 16th, 1871, 23 men opened a three-day meeting where forward-thinking mining and metallurgical engineers established the American Institute of Mining Engineers at the old Wyoming Valley Hotel on River Street in Wilkes-Barre. Whereas today, the AIME organization has grown to nearly 200,000 members of mining, metallurgical, and petroleum societies. Whereas Wilkes-Barre and Northeastern Pennsylvania have strong AIME ties, 43 of those 69 founders were from NEPA. The semi-centennial, centennial, and dozens of other annual meetings have been held here. Plaques commemorating the 100th and the 125th anniversaries and a Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission historical marker are located in the city of Wilkes-Barre. Whereas on Sunday, May 16th, 2021, AIME leadership, including directors of AIME's mining group headquarters in Denver, the Society of Mining, Metallurgy, and Exploration, SME, and the Pennsylvania Anthracite section of SME, will join civic leaders from Northeastern Pennsylvania to recognize the AI, AIME's 150th anniversary during the unveiling of a plaque on Public Square. Now, Therefore, it's resolved that I, George C. Brown, Mayor of the City of Wilkes-Barre, congratulate and celebrate the 150th anniversary of the American Institute of Mining, Meteorological, and Petroleum Engineers. And I urge members of the community to recognize the contribution AIME members have provided to the City of Wilkes-Barre throughout the world. Signed, Mayor George C. Brown. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Now, on one last note, uh, Wilkes-Barre, yes, uh, a mining town, very prosperous mining town in the past. The future of Wilkes-Barre, entrepreneurship. People coming into Wilkes-Barre, investing in new businesses, bringing new jobs here, new tax base. We're marking Wilkes-Barre as the entrepreneur capital of Pennsylvania. And with the help of Congressman Cartwright and other partners, key partners, we're doing that. So when you come back to Wilkes-Barre in a year or two, you'll see two brand new high rise hotels. You'll see a brand new uh, train station that we're turning into the Luzerne County uh, Tourist Promotion Agency building. We're gonna have, now listen to this, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, the home of Planters Peanuts. Planters Peanuts started in Wilkes-Barre. We're gonna have a Planters Peanuts Museum. And we contacted the owners of Planters Peanuts at that time, Kraft Foods, and we said, look at Planters Peanuts was started by two gentlemen in the city. We want to recognize them. And they said, Mayor, you have our, you know, our authority to do that. So at the new uh, train station that's going to be done over, we will have a free museum for Planters Peanuts, the only one in the world. So we're very proud of that also. So please come back to the city of Wilkes-Barre. Come back, visit us, and maybe we can entice you to stay here for a while. But thank you very much. Uh, right now, I'd like to introduce a friend of mine, wonderful Congressman, uh, Congressman Matt Cartwright. Good afternoon, everybody, and happy Susquecentennial. You all don't look 150 years old. <laughs> I am happy to join my dear friend, Mayor Brown, to, uh, in welcoming you to Wilkes-Barre. Uh, and let's have a, another round of applause for Mayor Brown. This guy is exceptional. I was able to call him up and tell him the good news that from the American Rescue Plan, uh, we're going to get him close to $40 million uh, in, uh, uh, in, in rescue money. Uh, he said to me, where would you like your statue? <laughs> no, no, no. This is the kind of thing we put up at Wilkes-Barre. Birthplace of the AIME. And uh, this is something that we're so proud of. Now, you know, one of the reasons I'm able to get money is that I'm at the top of the House Appropriations Committee. And um, that puts me, that's what I aim for because our area needs the help. And uh, helping terrific innovators like George Brown 
It is just a pleasure for me. I intend to do it as much as ever I can. But as the, as the chairman of the House Appropriations Subcommittee on Commerce, Justice, and Science, one of the things that I focus on is STEM education. And all of you understand what STEM is. It's science, technology, engineering, and math. And you know very well that the wealth of this country has always been built by engineers. You know that. The companies in our country, so many of them right near the top of the list were not even there 40 years ago because they exist because of engineering and technology breakthroughs that, that were never even thought of before. I, I speak to you proudly in favor of engineering. My father was an electrical engineer. We lost him a year ago. My mother's father was a chemical engineer and he ran the varnish factory in Schenectady, New York. And anytime there was a fire in Schenectady, he was up all night <laughs> because that's kind of flammable varnish. So I'm, I'm, it's a pleasure for me to join you here today. I'm not going to recite so many of the facts that George just recited, but, you know, obviously for 150 years, the American Institute of Mining, Metallurgical, and Petroleum Engineers has advanced the field of engineering and curated the legacy and the history of AIME and encouraged future generations of engineers through scholarships and through awards. And this is so important. And that's why I mentioned the sciences and what we're doing in Congress, because constantly we're looking for ways to stimulate and inspire young minds to go on into the future, continuing engineering and technological achievements. And that's what we're here to honor today, isn't it? The foresight of those 23 forward-looking men on May 16, 1871, who walked into the bar and had a couple of drinks and invented your society. <laughs> but uh, I am looking forward to the unveiling of the 25-year update of this wonderful plaque, and I wish you all the best. Congratulations on your sesquicentennial. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you, Congressman Cartwright and Mayor Brown, for those great remarks. We really appreciate it. We wish Wilkes-Barre a happy, belated 150th uh, sesquicentennial and look forward to 150 more years together promoting our legacies. It's amazing. I have followed the SME or AIME history for a number of years, and I had no idea until we were pulling this presentation together that our our anniversaries were so close together, and it really is phenomenal that both organizations were founded almost at the same time there. As AIME was planning our uh, celebrations for the 150th anniversary, we could not have imagined how this global pandemic would alter the landscape. Originally, we had hoped to have the leadership of AIME, its four member societies, as well as some of our local sections and interested members all here in Pennsylvania this weekend to hear historical talks, take industry related trips and celebrate it as a gala, at a gala dinner as we've done at the celebratory uh, meetings that we've had here in the past. Uh, we did a lot of planning. We did a lot of thought as to, and we looked at when, this, when masks were required, masks weren't around, the number of people that you could gather and ultimately we had to make a decision. So unfortunately, the pandemic forced us to postpone those functions until October, uh, but we'll still be here in October in the area. We are especially pleased, however, that circumstances have allowed us to have a group of people here in person with you today on the same day as our founding 150 years ago to help celebrate the Institute's beginning in this beautiful city. I'm certain that the 23 founders would be proud to know that their foresight produced an organization 
that flourished to become one of the five preeminent engineering founder societies in the United States, which together make up the United Engineering Foundation and represent the vast majority of the engineering profession. Through membership growth and specialization in its fields, AIME formed three separate branches for mining, metallurgy, and petroleum, later adding an iron and steel group as well through subdivision and merger. Now called the member societies, these four organizations are separately incorporated from AIME and represent nearly 200,000 members worldwide. AIME remains a vibrant institute with a vision to honor our legacy as a valued partner with our member societies. AIME manages endowed funds, supports pinnacle awards and scholarships, and honors our prominent members through our history. AIME also provides grants, archival preservation, and knowledge transfer through legacy initiatives like its oral history capture program. Our member societies work together to host innovative leadership training for young professionals and events such as the upcoming Multi-Society Safety Congress to benefit the profession and society. In May 1871, many of AIME's founders visited the Wyoming Geological and Historical Society, now the Luzerne County Historical Society, as part of the tours, the tours during that initial meeting. And AIME returned to WGHS once again during the 100th meeting in 1911. The LCHS has also recently provided photos which will appear on an AIME plaque to be dedicated on the Lehigh University campus this October, Lehigh being the site of our second meeting. And now to share some insights related to local historical preservation efforts, including AIME's, AIME's legacy, I'll turn the program over to Mark Rossetti Jr., Director of Operations and Programs at the Lucerne County Historical Society. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank George and Michelle from the AIME for inviting me to talk to you all today and to the mayor and to the city for hosting because as we've already said, the anniversaries are intertwined between the city and the AIME. So that was a fun little twist we were able to put on it. But most importantly, I want to thank all of you for coming out today, for recognizing the importance of today's celebration and for joining us, I was going to say on this beautiful day, but on this dry day. We'll go with that. Mm -hmm. That's been a nice change of pace around here lately, so we'll go with dry. Of course, as we all know, this is why we're here. 150 years ago to this very day, in this very city, pretty close to this very spot, just down the road, at the Wyoming Valley Hotel, a group of men got together to form what was then known as the American Institute of Mining Engineers. Now, this wasn't just another industrial fraternity. If you look at some of the names in the minutes of that first meeting, Drinker, Parrish, Thomas, Swoyer, Eckley Cox, these are names that are still all over the valley to this day, on the sides of buildings, on street signs, even in the names of municipalities. And of course, what did they talk about in that first meeting? safety, but they also talked about extracting valuable minerals and acquiring useful minerals. So of course you're going to have your first meeting here in Wilkesbury. In 1871, there was no more valuable or useful mineral than anthracite, period. The country was in the middle of a second industrial revolution at the time. Factories were going up across the country. Steamships were going up and down rivers and all along the coast. The railroad was experiencing a boom that had never be before been seen with thousands of miles of track being laid from west to east and cities being connected that had never been connected before. Within a decade from that first meeting, the first cities in America would be fueled by electrical light for the first time. What did all of these industries have in common? They all centered on anthracite. What did anthracite center on? The Wyoming Valley. So it makes perfect sense that they'd have their first meeting almost within eyesight of the headquarters of the United Mine Workers chapter number one, who is just down the road as well. Now, maybe I'm probably biased because a lot of these guys were also members of the Historical Society, which was also formed over a bar. So, you know, great minds think alike. <laughs> but I do believe that they knew they were forming a lasting organization. And I know for a fact that they would be very proud of all of us coming out to celebrate this. 
historical preservation is alive and well, not just in the city, not just in the valley, but in the county. You look at the Butler House, you look at the Iron Temple, you look at the recently done renovations at the Swetland Homestead and the 44th Meeting House, all the way down to presentations like this, plaques like this. This is all a key piece of the puzzle. We have so many institutions and organizations and remembrances in this valley that are over a century old. And every day I see more and more people, and I know you do, Tony, more and more people are getting interested in it. More and more people want to get involved. And all of this, this activity, this activeness on your end is a major part of that. Because I too am going to quote the Republican newspaper. We didn't, we, it's all right, it's okay. But two days after the meeting, on May 18th, 1871, the Republican newspaper reported on the founding of the AIME. And they closed their report with this. The American Institute of Mining Engineers will continue to hold further meetings in order to further perfect their institute. How perfect is it that we're here on the same spot 150 years later trying to achieve that same goal? Thank you. It's wonderful to be here today. Um, and um, as SME, as one of um, AIME's member societies, um, with its roots all the way back to 1871, we're proud to be here. Um, and given the cyclical nature of our industries, the importance of having a group with whom we can share best practices and learn about innovative processes, that's that innovative word again, you've heard so many times today, has been a driving force, really, for our whole organization. Today, SME's mission includes support for the current and future workforce, as well as environmental stewardship, while fo focusing, first of all, on the most important thing, the health and safety of everyone that works within this industry. SME has continued AIME's legacy and its commitment to the mining community. In recent years, SME has focused on maintaining academic programs for mining engineers, exchanges of technology and innovation, and outreach to government and the general public to emphasize the importance of mining and underground construction in providing fundamental resources to build and maintain our infrastructure. Today, SME's 13,000 members recognize, as AIME did in the very beginning, that it's really all about the members. Some of the most passionate about our group's collective histories are right here in Luzerne County in SME's Pennsylvania Anthracite section. In fact, that section recognized their 100th anniversary a few years ago in 2014. Uh, they also served as proud hosts for AIME's 145th anniversary, which included the dedication of a roadside marker uh, down the street here, down River Street, near the site of the former Wyoming Valley Hotel. This, this, this local chapter is indeed a fine promoter of AIME's rich heritage, and for that, we thank them. So we're honored, really, to be here today to help celebrate with you and thank you for the opportunity to recognize the many groups and people that's taken to get us here to 2021. Thank you. All the esteemed speakers, um, Mayor Brown, Congressman Cartwright, uh, for, for helping us bring this to the people's attention. Uh, we thank everyone for coming out today. And uh, with, without any delay, I'd like to ask uh, if uh, John Ackerman and Mike Korb would come up to do the unveiling honors. Two past chairmen of, of the AIME, uh, Society of Mining Engineers section here, Penny Anthony. Thank you. our official ceremony. Uh, we have a luncheon uh, scheduled for those that are registered and invited uh, at two o'clock. We'll stick with the schedule. And again, thanks so much to everybody for coming out. And uh, I think Tyler was in charge of the weather. So we'll thank her for that. Um, but I'd also, also like to uh, thank the officials from uh, AIME's headquarters, Michelle in particular, and from SME, Dave Kanegi, who've uh, come from 
Colorado to, to be here with us and have supported everything that we've wanted to do with this. It's, it wouldn't have happened without their assistance. So uh, thanks, thanks again for the other speakers. Thank you.